How are you doing, person who is listening right now? I am your host, Mohammed Magdi, and I'm sitting with the other host, Vivek Mabubani. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good today. It's a nice, beautiful, sunny day, and nobody knows that because we're on an audio-only podcast. Yeah, they're probably <laughs> listening on, like, Friday night, hungover, or yeah. not, not even hungover, already drunk. Exactly. Like, don't <laughs> even care about the weather. It's terrible. Yeah, it's already raining. Yeah. The time. Hi, person from the future. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> is is that it, your general audience profile? Like, y- drunk people on Friday? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll put oh, this yeah. on on the cab home. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's it. And what he, the person you just heard right now was yeah. our guest today, which is... Garen Chu. Yeah. Hey, Garen. How are you doing? You haven't been on the podcast for a while, right? No, I haven't been on the pod since I think I was. I did a Patreon one um, right. about uh, like weird comedy shows. Oh, uh, yeah, ago. yeah, yeah. You guys have way too much energy for like 11 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really tell people what time it is that okay. we, we yeah, record, but it's fine. We'll leave it in. You're listening to us live right now on yeah. your podcast app. <laughs> That's what's really happening. Send your questions in. <laughs> I like the fact that we only get Garen on when we have to talk about weird stuff. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is the perfect reason you're here. Oh, there is so much stuff happening right now in the news and stuff. Uh, yeah. Again, I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's I'm hoping the microphone picks up that side. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think it does. It, oh, it totally does. Totally. I, I'm monitoring everything. So real quick, before anybody, we get on into the details, how do people find you, Garen, online? Uh, people can find me at uh, Instagram, I am Garen, and then Facebook, uh, I am Garen as well. That is so Garen. He's like, I am, I am Garen. Garen. Yeah. I got this. Yeah. Hey, what about yourself, it, It's Mo? not uh, Garen from Comedy Central? No, no. Oh, <laughs> also, we're uh, finally starting the Hong Kong as fuck Instagram account very soon. Oh, nice. So oh, nice. Cut up clips and uh, mostly post people who, like a lot of people post photos wearing our t-shirts. So I'm like, yeah. oh, I need to. Yeah, Because I mean, that's, that's cool. the, Hong Kong as fuck is like. It's a good show, but it's secretly just a way for me to sell T-shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they're good enough, man. People are here walking <laughs> yeah. around. They're the, cool. They're good quality. We yeah. we make the same. Uh, the, we have the same guy, right? Oh yeah, nice. The whole yeah, Hong SHK. Kong. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we uh, we we do make T-shirts as well. If you're also if you want to buy one, just hit us up, Vivek or me, and we'll sort it out with a whole Hong Kong or a Hong Kong as fuck T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, wait, where can they find you, though, Mo? Uh, so yeah, when you hit me up, you find me at the other Muhammad on Instagram and Muhammad Magdi on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, what about you, Vivek? On Instagram, funny Vivek M, whatever. You, you know what? Like, yeah. you keep saying the M thing, and yeah. then I actually checked one time. I cared enough to check. Yeah. And there is no M. I couldn't find you with the M one. No, the letter M is for Facebook only. Ah, yeah. because I looked at Instagram. Why? Because like, was there another funny Vivek yeah. on Facebook? <laughs> yeah, some kid took that. I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then my intel- intellectual brain was like, well, which letter M? I mean, people should know. And like, everything is funny Vivek except for Facebook. Ah, uh, that's so annoying. And then has the most followers. I'm like, this is terrible. My <laughs> branding is ter- terrible. Damn. Yeah. Uh, All right. Also, if you are listening right now, if you're enjoying the podcast, please send it to just one friend. Don't send it to five. Don't send it to ten. Just send it to one who you know is going to listen. I just met a few people uh, a couple of nights ago, and I was talking to one guy, and this other guy recognized me from my voice. (laughs) And he was like, this is so weird, because I was just listening to your episode with Emily on the way here, and I'm like, am I drunk? (laughs) Why am I (laughs) hearing the same voice again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's me, and yeah, that was cool. So, yeah, he was recommended the podcast by someone else, so please keep doing that. Uh, we're starting a pyramid scheme. Every 100 people you recommend, you get absolutely nothing. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like a pyramid scheme. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. You don't get con, so we're good people. Yeah. Right? That's the good thing. <laughs> I mean, okay, you can at least send it to two people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send it to two people, and they might have two friends who yeah. will send it to two friends as well. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so anyway So anybody who got that joke Please send us a message And tell us a reference uh, true. <laughs> And you will be invited To the next podcast recording You'll be standing outside The door of the studio <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a good idea Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instagram.com Slash hotballs, I guess Exactly, yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> Man, there's so much happening In Hong Kong right now I don't even know where to start Let's start with the Nicole Kidman thing Okay Because that's just I don't know. So it, let's it, update everybody what, what, yeah. what, what's happened right now. So Hong Kong's quarantine regulations are basically like 21 days, I believe, from pretty much well, most Well, it depends places. actually. They, 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 by they the time they're listening to this right yeah. now, it's, it's probably changed it already. It might be 48. There, there's no more seven days. It's all 14. And basically most countries uh, that were f- seven yeah. got changed to 21 on a whim because... Uh, a woman who was coming from the U.S. was in quarantine for seven days, got out of quarantine, had the Delta variant, and people were like, freaking out by this one case. Right. And then a few days later, uh, it turns out that um, she didn't have the Delta variant when she arrived in Hong Kong. She actually got it in quarantine. So In whoa. quarantine. Got it in quarantine. So it wasn't even a thing. So they, um, and I was, I was actually kind of surprised by how good <laughs> Hong Kong scientists were able to do this. Um, basically, uh, they were at the Dorset, I think, in Wan Chai. 
and you're allowed to open your windows. Yeah. But mm. when you open the doors, you have to close the windows or else yes. it creates, you know, an uh, yeah. right. uh, air tunnel. Um, so they were doing the COVID testing and the people across the hall who had the Delta variant door opened, she got it. And they basically did the genomic sequencing and found out they had the exact same variant, which is how wow. they knew. she didn't get it before. She got it from across the hall. Oh, that's so crazy. So the fact that like this one case that made everyone freak out, government changed it to 21 days on a whim. Yeah. Uh, they were planning to do their, if you have 14 days, but you get a serology test and test positive for antibodies at the airport, it can be reduced to seven. Yeah. They're supposed to start that last week. And they're like, nope, 21 days. Instead of 14 reducing to seven, fuck it, 21 days. So, oh. Right. And a lot of people we know uh, are stuck. So uh, my wife, Cassie, who you guys know, she's been on the pod a few times. She's in Thailand, which was meant to be seven days. That's now 21. Yeah, we'll get to Cassie later as um, well, because the whole Thailand situation is pretty yeah, fucked. Mahesh as well. Mahesh literally arrived in New York. Three days later, they changed it to 21 days. Oh, yeah, like, and now he's yeah. there. So well, he can't... well he, it, it's also a mess because he has the choice between do I shorten my holiday fly back or try to ride it out? And if you shorten it, like it's almost impossible to book rooms for quarantine right now. Yeah. Like, everyone who has seven day bookings is trying to change it to 21, which now reduces the entire volume by a third. Uh, a lot of hotels are now just like, you know what? Fuck it. We're not even doing quarantine anymore. It's too much of a hassle. So there's yeah. reduced volume. And also if you had to turn back, uh, we looked it up an economy class flight from New York to Hong Kong last minute would be 55,000 Hong Kong. <gasps> oh man. Even wow. if Cassie decided what? to come back from Thailand, Thailand to Hong Kong, the last minute flight was 12 grand. Oh, oh so mate, it's one just, way. Uh, yeah, and then you're paying like, and if not, you're paying like. Quarantine. Also, okay, so here's a question: What happens when you're staying in a hotel seven days and you need to extend, and there is no room? There is no. Like, oh no! Does I mean, the hotel just like, kick you out? If no, if you're already in the seven days, it's seven days. Uh, they oh. only extend. They only extended it starting people who arrived yesterday which would have been friday damn that would have sucked like let's say you're in the line and you're yeah. like oh you first you yeah first. yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're like sir it's at 12 or 1 a.m uh, yeah. right now and you're 21 yeah days. please you're like, you're like damn it i'll yeah. never be polite again exactly yeah. like they should give some time for people to just plans the fact that they were like hey monday night starting friday morning and i was like what yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like three days you know? yeah yeah oh, no it's God. it's nuts um yeah we'll get to cassie later but yeah sure. nicole kidman so yeah. she came from Sydney, right? Which is now on, I think, Group A. Yes. Right? Uh, no, no, Group B. Group B. Group B, but, but it's still a high risk country. Group, group B is 21 city. days at the moment, correct? Uh, I th well, sorry. Australia specifically is 14 days. Okay. If right. you're vaccinated. Right. Yes. Uh, but the thing is, Sydney is now in lockdown. Right. A lot of people in Australia haven't left Australia in forever. Yeah. I have a lot of friends who've been stuck in <laughs> Where Australia. Our buddy for like Andy, who's the master of Hi going yeah. to a uh, great <laughs> <laughs> like places at the, the wrong time. Yeah. Oh, he just messaged right before we started recording. He said the kindy just got shut down as well. Oh, so man. he's like, I I'm going absolutely nuts. <laughs> is, yeah. is kindy's kindergarten or like some weird drug that the Australians? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I when think it comes both. To Andy, we never know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so in case you forgot, Andy. Curtin used to be on the show yeah. and, he, and he decided I'm going to go somewhere I like and now he's <laughs> locked in lockdown in Melbourne yeah. dude you know how he had this bit it was like when Hong Kong was doing well and, and uh, Australia was not and then he goes like, hey, mom and dad, are, are you, is it illegal to get a haircut yet? <laughs> Dude, there is like five people who sent him that, that video back <laughs> yeah, exactly. last week. <laughs> uh, someone, someone edited that clip with the Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. Ask James. I got to give him credit uh, for that. That, that so was good. perfect. <laughs> yeah. So basically, uh, Andy Curtin used to have this whole thing talking about how he's mocking his parents who are in Australia. They're yeah. like, so like, is it safe in Hong Kong? And now he's like, I'm enjoying the beach and everything. Yeah. And now he's in Melbourne. And then, oh, it's the best. Like, all I can say is that a uh, karma <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the irony is like so nicole kidman so she's she arrived in hong kong she's australian isn't she? she's australian yeah. she was filming a tv show for amazon prime called expats yeah which i also want to get into because what like it's based on a novel did anyone read that novel no apparently it's very good though so it's um because i kind of like the idea of like you know the the, the foreign life kind of thing like to show to the other side like how we are living but also i'm not sure how 
they uh, will they will so this is basically like to show white people what white privilege is <laughs> right yeah yeah exactly which well, so i'm totally enjoying here. I've, I've never i've never read the book i know it was written by a korean girl who grew up in hong kong okay and so we'll see i mean because you know expats can enca- encapsulate like Koreans right, right. And Indians. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But, but it's also about three white women, I think, or three yeah. women living here. I don't know. I'm hoping like there's a murder. They do some yeah. weird stuff <laughs> like <laughs> Nancy Kissel it, or Hello Kitty it, murder. <laughs> so wait, is it a drama or it's, is it? I, I believe it's a drama. I believe it's drama. If it's Nicole Kidman's in it. It's a drama. Right. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Sure, yeah. And the thing is, so she's she's filming the show. Uh, so she flies into Hong Kong and she doesn't have to quarantine. Yeah, so she got an exception from the economic board, basically. So yeah. they, they literally had eyes wide shut when she arrived. <laughs> <laughs> so where is your pay? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Is there a button you can... Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. 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 I think it's one of these... Hold on. Uh, oh, I don't have a recording? Ah, it's too late. I don't okay. record it. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so usually these exceptions are for um, financial CEOs. Yeah. And it's for you get to the country, you go to some board meeting, you get out. Mm. But she's, you know, she's filming a show, so she's going to be moving about. First two days, she's already shopping in Central. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you guys saw it. So there were she also four of her team, her assistants or whatever, four or six, also got exempted. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah, just with huge. Her. And, and they're not even like the actors and stuff. They're no, like no, her no. It's her guards. actual team. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, I wonder, so they haven't announced it yet. But there might be some irony of like when she finishes filming and goes back to uh, Australia, they make her quarantine in oh. Australia. <laughs> and they're like, wait, so Australia won't make her quarantine, yeah. but Hong Kong won't. Yeah. yeah. But I, I just want to um, read you guys something because there were there were two SCMP articles written yeah. about Nicole Kidman mm. yesterday, and one was written in the news section. It's like, oh look, people are very upset, and Nicole Kidman is right. outraged. Uh, totally fair because a lot of people. Are stuck. A lot of people have. Yeah, seen a lot of people also a spending lot of, so yeah. much money. So as much we were money. Just saying. Yeah. And she's a freaking billionaire. Yeah. yeah, she, yeah, can yeah. It. What, she can afford yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so that that was the article that I was like, this is the article that was meant to be written, and the other article was written by the SCMP style section. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it was the uh, Nicole Kidman five things about her quarantine that you didn't know, and it was just so tone deaf. <laughs> it was like number one, she flew in on a private jet. How amazing is that? And then just description of the jet. Oh. <laughs> and then number two is like. She's like, she's not staying in a fancy hotel. She's renting a $600,000 a month apartment on the peak. I'm like, <laughs> is this supposed to make us yeah, like her? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You're making like, it worse. A, and then the last thing uh, was, uh, she's already spotted shopping. Look, even famous celebrities can't help but shop in Hong Kong. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> this is not the right article. Yeah, no, yeah. no. <laughs> it's very <laughs> like, yeah, at all. buzzy, like did, millennial did, did the author had their own, Like, I bet you the author had a little photo over there as well, just standing on like, oh, that, I wrote this. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. It's five Probably. items of mine. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, that, that's the that, contrast. So that's the problem is that basically the ec- ec- economic board was like, oh, because she's bringing a lot of basically of uh, money, financial aid. But and is she though? I mean, like, even if she is, I'm like, really? Like, I think I've been paying taxes. I've been doing all, all these years. Exactly. And also, how do you know that the kid who's stuck in quarantine right now isn't like you know rich as hell? Right. No, but so are a lot of people. I mean, like. Also, you can, what is Nicole Kidman's whole thing? Oh, you know what? If I have to quarantine, I'm not making my show. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, that's she's right. making yeah. money too, right? Yeah, and yeah, of course. A lot of money. Exactly, yeah. Like, yeah, there's some economic growth in terms of, I mean, it's not even like. But it depends also growth, how like, the show depicts Hong Kong, right? Well, but like it's, maybe it's just showing us yeah, all be, like being trash. That's what I'm curious about. I'm like, yeah. they couldn't CG that stuff. I actually, I kind of want this to happen just to be like, see, she was actually trashing us the whole time. Yeah, and you let it in without quarantine. <laughs> no, but like, okay, so you have the immediate impact of you know hiring gaffers and film crew and light sure. people. And make a, I mean, that's that's some jobs, not a huge amount of jobs, some yeah. jobs. And their main thing is like, oh look, it, it will, could put Hong Kong on the map, and then people would want to come to Hong Kong. And then what? Twenty-one day quarantine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our hotel business is booming. Yeah. It's like we're supporting the economy. Yeah. Oh my face. Yeah. Mass th- maybe selling. maybe people would watch the show and think the old can have an exemption as well. Yeah. Just yeah, like yeah. her. Oh, exactly. I, no. Th- th- I, I hope there's like an episode where like Nicole Kidman's character arrives and then she's in quarantine and yeah. she's like talking right. about how awful quarantine is. Oh, like, you were never like, even quarantined. Is bullshit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or like she actually has to do. Like, like fake quarantine just to study what yeah. it's like. <laughs> also, is the is the show uh, in COVID times? Like, are people wearing masks during the show? No, I mean, I don't know if they'll change things up or not. Because because that's even more fucked if no one in the crew and yeah. obviously has to be close to people during filming. Yeah, like, is no one in the crew is masked up and she just came from Australia. So I mean, they they could hire some actors to basically walk around the streets and pretend like everything's normal, and just like seal up the streets. I know they yeah. can do that. Oh but yeah, it's yeah. Like, you gotta have all. I the used to live when I lived in TST. My street, for some reason, it's a very obscure street, Observatory Road. 
it's like once a month or twice a month sometimes it's locked for filming oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't know why like does anyone you both are no that's a good like, like commercial filming street um, yeah but it's ve- it's very not you know special i think it's usually just like quiet and not that yeah busy. yeah maybe uh-huh. that's like uh-huh. yeah, going through, yeah right? it's like like if you go to like off street and cow yufong right down here as well yeah. like usually no cars go down there so that's yeah. why people film there all the time uh, Plus, true. like you know what the bottom of observatory road when you yeah. cross the road uh where like the museum is you got yes. that fountain a lot of people like to film there uh okay yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's more iconic i saw i was coming back home late once and i thought like i was drunk i wasn't but i thought something's up because i thought the 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 sun Oh, it's out yeah, late at yeah. night, and turns out they have this massive light oh, that yeah. I've never seen. So it's bigger than a stadium light, yeah. and it's on my little street, and I couldn't look at it. It was so big, and yeah. it was just on the one actor. I'm yeah. like, and the actor is sweating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so crazy. And the funny thing is, like, they're trying to fake daylight. I'm yeah, like, yeah. You, you know, you can just wait it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, I think they um, probably were because I think they never film during the day. It's always yeah. at night. It's hard. It's hard because like yeah. you got people, people walking around. You can't really block. Yeah, yeah. My favorite is um where I used to live in Prince Edward. They used yeah. to film a lot of episodes of Zun Teng there. So oh, yeah, yeah. Really like one classic. of the longest running soap operas in Hong Kong. Okay. And they'd always just have a dude on the ladder just, like, pouring in the fake rain. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, always, yeah, like, yeah, rain scenes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, you can't film when it's raining. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny, man. Because, like, yeah, they, otherwise they have the, the, the hose that basically bursts into, like, raindrops and everything. So that's yeah. another thing. Then the whole street is, like, wet and all that. And you have to pretend you're like, oh, the rain is so real. Oh, we're going to win. It's terrible, man. Yeah, it is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, let's come back to Nicole Kidman. So right now, she, she's filming a, a show. Yeah, Amazon where can we spot her? We can just, uh, how about we go protest? That's probably not a good idea, but. <laughs> We can try. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'd be weird. Like Hong Kong's like, this is where we use the anti-protest. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Can we? Let can we file Nicole a complaint and say we heard her slay one of the protest slogans? Will that get her in trouble? Oh, Will they quarantine yeah. her then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like, I think she said so. Wait yeah. a second. You know. She's like, she's she was like, buying diamond, and I heard her yeah, say yeah, yeah. under her mask. No, she was like, oh, where's the telecom company? Three Hong Kong. Did you say free Hong Kong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do we know how long is she in town? Ta- she's she's going to be here for a while. So they they announced yesterday that um, which is the weird thing because like most of the exemptions their people are coming in and out yeah um, they're going to be filming until I believe the end of October damn wow. end of October. So she's we here should for like a I month mean, we should months. we should try to uh, invite her to a show yeah. yeah, like or they can film the show. You Who know what, expats? Nicole yeah. Kidman, if you come to the next Hong Kong as fuck, all is forgiven. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Also, wait, you get a free T-shirt. You get a free T-shirt. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Wear wear the Hong Kong as fuck T-shirt. Like even if it's like pajamas or something on the show. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And people take the wrong with that. Did yeah. she say fuck Hong Kong? Was it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, like. We did do a segment on last night's show about Nicole Kidman, though. Oh yeah. And How <laughs> about you don't say that? So you know, <laughs> just if she's listening. She, yeah. yeah, yeah. At, at the end, I was just like, you know what? Now I'm glad she died at the end of Mulan Rouge. <laughs> <laughs> so in case you're listening, Nicole Nick, uh, Kidman, you can actually join us on Patreon. And oh, subscribe yes, over yeah. there. That, yeah, that's, yeah. All, that's where the pro Nicole Kidman podcast yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, for yeah if you want to hear us th- talk about your best movies, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's $5 a month. Five yeah. US dollars a month for fucking sake. She, she can do the $20 one. So uh, I, I I'm, think, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm low-balling her. Yeah, yeah, just, let's just it. go for this five wheeler, Foot in the door. I foot in the door. And then she'll be like, oh, she's talking. They're saying good things about us. Yeah, exactly. It is. It is upsetting because I will say before this, I was a, probably kind of a fan. I was like, yeah, I mean, I, uh, Kidman's cool. I was well, okay with her. She's not like my favorite actress, but she's also not the worst. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She's That's, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, do you have a lot of people who are actually really upset about this, like lose their minds because of this? Like they were oh. really losing their minds about the quarantine. Yeah. Did this become like the tipping point for anybody? Yeah. So if you're if you're on any of like the Facebook Hong Kong quarantine support groups or people like there are. So many people talking about this right now. And actually, the funny thing is, I thought it was just uh, Hong Kong. So, like, a lot of people, obviously, in quarantine, in quarantine support groups, people trying to come back, they're really upset at this. Mm. People, like, my mom, who has recently just always done that, you know what, the the government, I'm sure they have a reason for doing it. Even, like, Nicole Kidman, she's like, okay, this is bullshit. (laughs) All right, there we go. But I was surprised at how many people from Hong Kong who live in Australia are pissed off or just mm. Australians in general because a lot of people in Australia they're like they want to come oh, I wanted to come Hong Kong or I wanted to go back or I have family there I wanted to visit um, my friend Jackie she's like I haven't seen my dad in two years Yeah, but she gets to go without quarantine because she's like I know Mental health wise, I couldn't probably do quarantine. Ah, dude, like, which is for a lot of people. It's yeah, fair. yeah, yeah. Like, it's, fourteen it's days in a room, twenty-one days—that's insane. I like, just yeah. remembered uh, my buddy. I'm not gonna mention his name, but he's he's a regular listener. He just had his 
parents come in from France. So he's French. He lives here. And his, he, came, he brought his parents in on a dependent visa because he had just had a second daughter and he, he really wanted them to see her. And they were flying from Paris through Dubai. And they to do their washout. Okay, so... Dude, that, it was so crazy. Yeah, th- so that's the worst part. So um, a lot of places uh, that are no-fly list or 21 days, if you... What the people in quarantine or traveling call mm. washout, if you travel to a Group B or Group A country... Yeah. And just be there for like two weeks or three weeks, then you can do the seven day quarantine, which was a lot of people's plans. So they fly to Abu Dhabi, they flew yeah. to Thailand before yeah. going to Hong Kong, and then it increased to 21 days anyway. So, yeah, like, yeah. so you spent all there? this money yeah. staying in Dubai, and then you spend more now. But actually, his story is different because the, he was trying to get them in before the Thursday, uh, and then. <clears throat> the, Emir- the the airlines wouldn't let them in from Paris. And they just held... Because they're flying to Dubai, right? And from Dubai, people are flying to different places around the world. Yeah. They only held the people who, who they knew their final destination is Hong Kong. And they just kept them there for a while. They wouldn't like let the plane go. Yeah. And the guy was literally waiting on the updates from the Hong Kong government. Oof. And they're holding the entire flight. And he's here freaking out. Yeah. Because Emirates Airlines knows that if they get rejected by Hong Kong they have to pay for their flight back. Mm. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So they're just holding them there and he's here freaking out oh. and it took him like maybe 40, 45 minutes until they let the Hong Kong people on, on the plane and in Dubai it happened again. Oh. And they landed in Dubai they're like, sorry, there is more changes. You have to wait because we're, we can't just yeah. fly you to Hong Kong. Yeah. And then and they came here. Rejected. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think you have to have your quarantine pre-booked, right? It's yeah. probably one yeah. of those flights like, wait, you're quarantined seven days. Do we need 21 days? Yeah, 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 yeah it's just, yeah. It's, uh, they were very manic, but also they arrived, went through the airport, whatever. They got two weeks. Yeah, it's yeah, almost yeah. like ne- you now go to court and it's just up to the judge I at this know. point. Yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and there's, the, there's the testing thing too, because like you obviously have to have a negative test yeah. from certified places yeah, before, before yeah, you get yeah, on a plane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's one of the reasons Cassie couldn't come back and I know we'll get to this later but she's like even if she decided to come back uh, the only flight back to Hong Kong was less than a day later and it takes like 24 hours for some of those places to get the tests back so she's like I can't even get a test in time there is also this thing that like you can have seven days if you are tested in Hong Kong before you leave yeah, okay. Which obviously doesn't make well, sense yeah, if yeah, you're yeah, yeah. not so in Hong yeah, Kong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For Cassie, it was like 48 hours, and she had, because, you know, they test a lot where she is right now. Yeah. And her last test was like five days before. So she's like, ah, uh, yeah, uh, wasted. It's messed up. Yeah. Okay, well, so again, just to break things up, I want to let all listeners know. So this is what comedians like to discuss about off the stage. So when yeah. you come up to us, like, you guys have really funny conversations. Do you yeah. do that all the time? Like, no. No, actually, no. yeah, yeah. We have yeah. fun conversations, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so this is an issue because, like, we've not had, like, you know, a lot of shows overseas and people flying into Hong Kong and doing stuff like that. And I'm just like, curious, what do you guys think that's going to happen? With the rate the government is going at, we want the zero case policy it's issue. Dumb. It's as, like it's not going to happen. The fact that someone, Singapore is opening you know, up now. Yeah, you, you can go to Singapore from Hong Kong, no quarantine. But you come oh, to yeah, Singapore. Oh yeah, let's get boom. into that a bit as well because yeah. Singapore went like fuck the bubble. Yeah. At some point, she was like, "But you yeah. guys can come. I yeah, don't yeah. care what happens when you go back. But, but yeah. also, but you are more than welcome." Their rules are weird too. They're like, uh, you have to have a tracking app, which, I mean, it's Singapore. Yeah. Um, also, it's. Short stays only, so I think. I, I believe I read it's like you can only stay for. Well, a certain let's be honest. Of time. Who wants to stay that long in Singapore? <laughs> 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 so, I, 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 I might have. I, honestly, I think it's they're doing it. The short stays only thing is so people are going there just for like business trips. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. by and the way, they also they're not requiring vaccine va- vaccine record anymore. But at which the is same, very weird. So they will test you, but they're like, we don't care if you're vaccinated. Just come in. I, I think oh. the thing though for Singapore, like. Hong Kong's got zero cases. Yeah. yeah. Hong Kong has no cases. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for Singapore, they're probably like, yeah, fine, come over. You're probably going to get COVID here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's the thing. Like, people need to realize that this is more more than an avoiding thing. It's more we have to live with it kind of deal now, right? Yeah. That's what I think Singapore's probably thing is like, look, we got to get on with life and everything. You guys coming down, like, if something does happen, we'll figure it out then. But otherwise, we can't just keep waiting until this gets zero. And I think that's such a typical Hong Kong parent mentality. Until you get 100, you're not my son. You know, uh, it's like, he wants yeah. full marks. It's like, I got 99. I'm the top in the class. Everybody else got like 20. Yeah. I'd you're be, a disgrace. Yeah. I, I'd be like, 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 Immensely, like now, still, you know, you could have been a hundred. Like, oh my god, like you know what I what I messed up on because the teacher just had a bad mood. That's why I got nine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you know what? 
go cheer the teacher on and come back to and then I'll call you my son. It's like you got all that. So I think that's the mentality over here with the guy. I mean, to answer well. your question, I feel like as you know, someone who flies acts in and stuff. I have no hope in that happening until like maybe late next year. Yeah. Well, you know, even in the smaller scale, right? So. Uh, no, no. Yeah. Not even from Asian cities. No, um, no. What, what I mean yeah. is like so the so the Hong Kong International Comedy Competition is coming yeah. up, right? And that I thought became an event of like, so what they do the Comedy Central Asia thing when Thailand runs their festivals, like this is the and when Shanghai you guys run your yeah. competitions, like yeah. this is the marquee thing for all the comics around the scene, the Asia scene, to get together. Yeah. Like, that was yeah. the main thing. I mean, that's how I met you, Mohamed, yeah, like, yeah, when yeah. you uh, did the competition in Hong Kong. Yeah. Like, we have a great time. Like, last time we were in Thailand doing that uh, competition, oh, man. That was it was so just much like, fun. oh, it's just a bunch of comics who are all, like, supporting each other. We haven't seen each other for months or years. Yeah. You're coming from Malaysia. You're coming from Singapore. You're coming from Shanghai. You're coming from Beijing. And we're just hanging out. And I noticed, like, not only are we not getting that this year, yeah, and we haven't gotten that in the last two years, mm. um, the new comics in the scene don't understand that energy. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I think yeah. like I love the Hong Kong scene, but I really love the Asia scene. I love yeah. that like you know we became really good friends. Yeah, like, yeah. Good, good friends with Andy, guys like you know Rishi and the Jason. Yeah, yeah, Leons, yeah, exactly. like, yeah, yeah. All, Sam C, uh, Sam Yar, yeah, yeah, all yeah, of these guys. Like, yeah. even, ex- not even including bring up the bigger acts. Like yeah. you know we used to travel to those yeah. places all the time. I, I like I obviously the streak ended. I. I had a three years in a row where I was at least performing in 10 different cities every year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and like multiple countries. And like, that was super yeah, cool. It and was, uh, it, it was, yeah. It like works your muscles. Like, so you're not just performing in Hong Kong, but yeah. also like the comics in Hong Kong can see like how good some of the other comics around. Correct. You know yeah, what yeah, really yeah. sucks for me as well is that when I moved here, because traveling from Hong Kong to anywhere in Asia is so much easier than from Shanghai. Mm-hmm. And I was so excited about doing that here because it's the same like you. I would tour, but it's harder for me because just the visa restrictions of that. And from Hong Kong, it's easier. And obviously, as soon as it, I, I, you know, I started yeah. like settling here and then COVID happened. Never. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. never flew out of Hong Kong except for one time to go to Dubai to see my family. Yeah. And I did do a show there, but that, that was it. Yeah. Because yeah. those... Those used to be like weekend trips. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Dude, Shanghai, Taiwan, those are like hour and a half flights. Like, cool. Yeah, just go there, get, boom, Get there boom, Saturday boom, morning, yeah. you know, like do some do touristy show, things, yeah. eat some nice food, do a show, Sunday, chill out, fly back. You're back home by like yeah. an afternoon yeah. on a Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. I could still cook dinner at home. Yeah, you know? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we, we, I would have like, for example, going to Singapore for the last day, Masala and stuff. It would be Tuesday morning, you fly down, do the gig at Tuesday night, and you fly out Wednesday morning. It was like this thing. It's like no big deal. Honestly, that's that's all that you can do in Singapore. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, after like, that. I, like a couple of times I tried to book with uh, the Mary Line, the other club, and they're like, it's a Thursday. I'm like, no thanks. Uh, yeah. I don't okay. want to. Because Omar's gig is on Tuesday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I literally didn't want to stay two more days. Yeah. For the yeah, other yeah, yeah. Day. I I'm did. Like, no. <laughs> I, I did the biggest uh, mistake once. I should have just taken the v- vacation day. I did. Um, uh, I did masala on the Tuesday, mm-hmm. and then I was like, because I didn't want to take a vacation day, I got uh, Umar to be like, "Hey, you know what? Uh, don't pay for the hotel. Um, just like give me the extra cash. I'll take the red eye." The red eye in Singapore Ooh. is 6 a.m. lands in Hong Kong like at like 9, 9 a.m. Yeah, yeah, what? And I got managed to like get to work. <laughs> Didn't even go home. Got <laughs> to work at 10.30. And man. I was like, I'm so tired. Why did I decide <laughs> yeah, to do yeah, this? Yeah. I've done it once. I'm like, never again, man. Oh, it hurts. It hurts yeah. so much. Especially because you did a gig the night before. Yeah. And then yeah. you do red eye. That hurts, man. If you didn't have a gig and you just like do a red eye flight, whatever. But the yeah. gig Because really you also me. get to the airport at what? 5, uh, 4.30 or well, something. Well, my, my whole thing is like I went... I went around like after midnight to the airport, like napped at the airport because my whole the only reason I did this I read on this thing like Changi airports they have like showers you can use that they're great. Yeah. I'm like oh. yeah, shower is great and the shower is great, but then you're supposed to shower after the flight. When you shower yeah, yeah, and yeah. you get on the plane, you still feel dirty after. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and you go straight to work. Yeah. yeah, man. Oh man. So that's another thing I noticed that because for the new comics in the Hong Kong scene, they've not really been exposed to a lot of overseas comedians. So they're basically only seeing the local acts, right? Yeah. yeah. And what well, the problem with this is that like when we were up and coming, like growing up and everything, doing comedy in the beginning, you would see these overseas acts and go like, oh my god, this is possible. Oh, yeah. Man. We can do that. Like, what, yeah. what? How does he? You know, how does she? I, I'm confused. And then yeah, right now. Is, we are the bar, yeah, <laughs> which is not really yeah. good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> which explains, I'm like, these beginners are terrible. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but I, I you, to, to your point, like the first big show I ever watched was 2012. I like started doing comedy for like two months. 
and I got a ticket to the finals that year. Yeah. And that finals was the one held at the APA. So I'm like, oh, oh man. Oh, that's like, a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thousand seat theater. I mean, there's only 600 tickets sold. Yeah, but still, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thousand seat theater. <laughs> uh, but, you know, Jim Bruski, Turner, uh, Joanna was there. Yeah. Rishi, that was the year Rishi won. Rishi won, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Ryan Heineck made the finals. Uh, Mahesh made the finals. And it was k- kind of cool. I, I was looking at the photo of the nine finalists. Yeah. And like six are still regular comedians right yeah, now, nine yeah, years yeah, later. Yeah. Uh, Ruben Paul was hosting. Andrew Chu did a guest spot because he had won the year before. Yeah. And it was awesome. And it's just like, yeah, I was like, oh shit, I didn't know local comedy can be like that. Yeah. In yeah. Theaters that like that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So that's the thing is like it, it's relying on the veteran comedians now in Hong Kong because again we kind of have to set the bar and also maybe challenge ourselves and push ourselves to do something a bit more yeah. rather than just do another set along with the new comic. Of course, but we are also not being exposed to that high level for so long now. Yeah. So I'm actually worried that we are also, you know, getting so in a rut in a way. This leads me to the next point: is like which comedian in the world do you think could convince the Hong Kong government to come down with no quarantine? I have a feeling Russell Peters might work just because like the Hong Kong government might be like, hey, Ooh. hey, he sounds like us, ha ha. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel like probably someone like as high profile as Jerry Seinfeld or, no, or, or I, Chris Rock or something. I was almost thinking like, so it has to be someone who who will take the zeitgeist. So like, because yeah. Jerry Seinfeld coming here, locals won't watch. Yeah, yeah, uh, locals Jerry won't watch. Okay, yeah. that's that's a good point. Um, but if you had, first of all, like. Trevor Noah probably because he or, sold out that five thousand. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Ali Wong. I was thinking Ali sure. Wong. For Ali sure. Wong, Ali yeah. Wong sure. might work. I think yeah, Ali Wong yeah, yeah. would explode here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's because I think I think then the government might identify with it and be like, oh, she wears glasses. Our leader wears glasses. You know, it's one of us. Yeah. <laughs> They're both <laughs> yeah. Asian. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. She's a Wong. Okay, yeah. that, we got a lot of Wongs here. Yeah. Actually, to to one's a cunt. Chance. One talks about her cunt. Exactly. Can I say that? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say which one was which. I yeah, say yeah, exactly. Which. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to quote Tim Chan's joke, they both go on stage and say something <laughs> stupid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now this is the thing, like. I'm, I'm just curious because like it was just in my head. I'm like, okay, let's say we get a comedian and we yeah. convince the government, like, first of all, if we can match every dollar that Nicole Kidman's was contributing to society through crowdfunding, right? Say, okay, so we raise a Patreon, like, everybody. Yeah, six hundred thousand yeah. dollars we got, right? Ready banking for a, a flat at the peak. We can cover that, okay? Yeah. And she, let's say, spending, let's just say she's spending ten thousand Hong dollars per day. Yeah. So you need another three hundred thousand dollars for the <laughs> month. <right? laughs> so we can raise a million dollars. Yeah. A we month. can <laughs> a month, a month for a, three months until October. Yeah. Well, we'll do a month <laughs> to I get mean, one. Comedian, <laughs> <laughs> who is going to ask for another three million to uh, perform? Exactly, <laughs> yeah. So I know you have a rich friend, people, listeners are yes. tuning in right now who are not subscribing. Usually, you're the one with a rich friend because yes. that's why you're cheap. Yes, you yes. Don't, you're like spending. Yeah. Your you're money. listening to free episodes right now. Exactly, Shame on yeah. you. I <laughs> think you are underestimating Nicole Kidman if you think she's only spending ten thousand dollars. I'm day. averaging. I'm yeah. averaging. I don't think. I don't think she's like shopping on a daily basis. That's but true. let's just say so. At the end of the week, she spends ten thousand US. Okay, let's just assume yeah. That. So that's what okay. I'm trying Probably. to average out. You yeah. know, the food and everything. I'm gonna say the six hundred thousand dollar rent. You know, yeah. it probably covers that as well. Also, if you're listening. to this and you happen to you know work around that show or know someone who works there get us her schedule just message us yeah. anonymously get us her schedule yeah. she needs extras hired yeah yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. we'll tell we're like fuck yeah. Nicole Kidman hey we're gonna put you on the show extras like hell, hell yeah, 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 yeah yeah I'm on expats delete the episode, delete the episode. Yeah, yeah. I will be there. <laughs> next, no next year our poster is like as seen on expats <laughs> yeah exactly on Amazon <laughs> Prime exactly, of exactly put the Amazon it's, Prime uh, logo yeah. everywhere it's like the front image on your website it's yeah. <laughs> like that was me yeah right on my way to a comedy show. <laughs> it's actually you blurred in the back. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's going to be funny? You can actually fake yourself. Like, that was me. Like, really? That's quite yeah. a blurry. Like, oh, that was me. I think the only one who can fake himself is him. <laughs> one of the three of us. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah the uh, chance of having a Garen looking guy on the yeah, exactly. is, is Just more put like a random it. Chinese guy in the back. It's like, yeah, that was him. Exactly. <laughs> they should do some like thing where they have some of the people on Mirror be on that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Any, oh, any, any of them will be fine. I bet you anything, they probably thought of that. Nicole Kidman meets Gung Tho, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the people in Hong Kong are like, we'd like the picture with Gung To, not you. Yeah, yeah. Pokemon's <laughs> <yeah. laughs> like, they're all here for me. It's like, who is this blonde yeah, lady? Exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. All uh, right, so we've got that one. So again, just to remind everybody, Patreon is open to you guys who want to subscribe. By all means, throwing $3 million, we will try our best to get Ali Wong. All right, that's yes. the deal. Yeah. Okay. okay, we got deal. that one. So coming back to another thing, though, uh, is that we like, we also do the typical pe- thing of sending the screenshot of us paying her so we can show that we I can Photoshop take. that. Yeah, I can totally <laughs> Photoshop that. That's not a nice. problem. Yeah, that's easy. I can do okay. that. In money bags. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. By the way, sorry, sorry, I'm throwing this in there. Um, can I tell? Uh, so Hannibal Burris, uh, yeah. when he came to Hong Kong, and uh, me and Tammy were organizing the show, and we were talking to his agent, and we got all the ticket sales, and we're like, hey, um, 
tickets are already sold out, so we can pay you guys the money. We can give it to a check, send it to uh, uh, your bank account. And they're like, um, just give it to Hannibal Burris cash in a bag. <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, ah, that's really funny. He's like, no, no, no. He asked, can he get it in cash in a bag? I'm like, nice. what? And Tammy uh, thought, he's like, you know what? I'm going to, we're, we're just going to mess around with Hannibal. And I asked Hannibal, like, why do you want it in a bag? He's like, well, you know, like, I always wanted to feel like a gangster. And comedy is not the most gangster right. of uh, uh, jobs you can yeah. do. So if I ask people to pay me in a bag in cash, then I feel like a gangster. Yeah. And then Tammy comes up and it's in this like, Hello Kitty pencil case. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, all right, all right, this is, this is less gangster. Yeah. <laughs> I like, by the way, I like you. He looked at it and he was like, I'm not even going to count it. We're like, what? Yeah, yeah, like, damn it, I can take $100. That's a lot of money in Hong Kong. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he'd take a $100 out. He's like, like I, I trust me. you. <laughs> yeah. It's like, all right. He's Bad probably, idea. Yeah, exactly. He's probably like, yeah, I'm not going to sit, waste my time. I could do another set and double this money right now than count this <laughs> oh, money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got that. All right, so again, so we wanted to talk about a Cassie as well. That's, yeah, you know, so her, let's, her so uh, just the backstory here. Why is Cassie in Thailand? Uh, also, let's start with the sandbox first. Okay, okay. let's so, also go back in case anybody doesn't know who Cassie really is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they might, I think like, most listeners, because she's also very active on the WhatsApp group. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. most listeners know uh, who Cassie yeah. is. Cassie's been on here twice, yeah. or once or twice, and she is the founder of... Chaotic Expats Hong Kong and happens to be my wife. You can't say my wife with that. <laughs> my wife. My wife. <laughs> it's weird. Like, there's no, there's no like. She tried to do my husband. There's no equivalent of it. No, yeah. no. it's not a thing. Um, so she happens to be my wife. My uh, wife. She, her dad lives in a uh, old folks home in Chiang Mai. Right. Um, he moved there about two years ago. Uh, it's just much nicer than the ones in Hong Kong. Also yeah. much more affordable. It's bigger space. The food's better. Um, the the medical staff is better there. So he moved to Chiang Mai and Cassie used to visit probably once a month, once every two months. Mm. And I would go to Chiang Mai as well. It's pretty cheap. Flights are pretty cheap. Uh, and Chiang Mai is a nice city. And uh, we were planning to get married there as well. So, yeah. And that has been delayed like four times. <laughs> <laughs> and kind so, of like the Hong Kong, Singapore bubble. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so they announced they were doing, um, which might have... I don't know how it affects uh, Bangkok, but basically in Thailand, what they realized was we need to get our tourist dollars back. Um, too much of our country relies on tourism. Bangkok is the only place that doesn't require tourism because that's where all the banks and all the big mm. brands are. So they're like, you know what? Let's vaccinate everyone else first. And if you get uh, over, if you get herd immunity, uh, we're going to open a thing called the sandbox. And mm. um, Phuket was the first one, and Koh Samui's open as well. So what the sandbox is is basically. Tourists who are vaccinated can travel there um, with a lot of conditions, which is like a lot of bureaucracy mm -hmm. uh, to figure out. So it includes things like you have to be vaccinated. You have to have gotten a serology test to doubly prove you're vaccinated. Mm. You've gotten a regular test. You have to get a specific type of insurance that covers COVID. Mm. Um, and by the way, the government pretty much admitted they did that because... It's something that backpackers couldn't afford. <laughs> They're like, ah. we, we basically want the tourists who will spend money, not right, the backpackers right, right. who are paying a dollar. Yeah, a if day. you're going to buy insurance. How much is that insurance? Um, the insurance is not expensive. It's like $4,000 Hong Kong that'll cover you for three months. It's a dollar. Yeah. If you're there for two weeks, it'll, it's cheaper as well, but yeah. it's basically weeding out. It's basically out the a dollar more than every backpacker's budget. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, ah, it's so I mean, bad. most most people who have a lot of like travel, a lot of travel insurance is covered as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, then you need. Uh, thing uh, a form by the government that's signed by the thai government then you get there and it's only specific hotels yeah but the whole point is once you're there you can be there for either 14 days and then once and they track you on an app they test you every five days mm. and then after you pass your 14 days you can then travel anywhere in thailand, thailand okay or after you've been there for seven days you can then travel to other sandboxes mm. so right now mm. it's phuket koh Samui, and a few small islands and by the way uh Phuket is now basically 100% vaccinated. Wow. Damn. They, they show it's it's 92% vaccinated and the only people who aren't vaccinated are basically children or people with like health problems. Like I bet you mm. right now Kailam's looking at Phuket going like, "Oh, so nice." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they they vaccinate want, everyone who can I be want, vaccinated. I want I want me. Uh, uh, yeah. and so Koh Samui is past the 70% mark. Uh, Chiang Mai is at 30% now, so their whole thing is they want to See if they can open the sandbox by. What October. was their vaccination strategy? Though? How did they convince everyone to do run it? after you? On no, the street? no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> in Thailand, it's not like Hong Kong. In Thailand, everyone wants to get vaccinated. Oh. It's just like the vac vaccines arrive late because the Thai government decided for AstraZeneca. Um, mm. The king owns a 
biochem company. Oh. And we're like, you know what? We're not going to buy AstraZeneca. We're going to buy the rights to AstraZeneca and only I make the vaccine. Uh, nice. Uh, and also his company has never made vaccines before. So oh. yeah. the time it took for them to make it and roll it out was way slower than expected. Yeah. Um, but everyone's got like, there are so many vaccination queues. Like, you know, for us, when we signed up mm. for the vaccine on the website, uh, it's available in some places for certain people in Bangkok now. And it's like, two month waiting lists wow damn yeah so people want to get back to the point where all the embassies um well not all but a lot of the embassies so for example the french embassy in thailand mm. are just like you know what fuck it if you're french come to the embassy we bought some vaccines we're just gonna give you a shot <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. we're not gonna yeah, yeah, make you wait that long inside the embassy yeah inside wow. the embassy. Yeah. um the unfortunate thing is because bangkok is doing so poorly um basically when they're like it's eighteen thousand to twenty thousand cases a day in Thailand now, 90% of that is Bangkok. Right. And yeah. because of that, most of the flights that fly domestically in Thailand fly through Bangkok at a certain point. Yeah. Like mm. even if it's like Chiang Mai to Phuket, that flight will eventually fly to Bangkok and then sure. back to Chiang Mai. To Phuket. Yeah. Um, and because of how th bad things are going in Bangkok, they've now grounded all flights domestically, oh. pretty much all flights. Yeah. You can, if you're sandbox, they allow you to fly from Phuket to Bangkok just to like get out of the country. Yeah. Because yeah. some, some countries only fly to Bangkok. Mm. So now not only can Cassie not come back or it's harder for her to come back because of the 21 day quarantine. So we're trying yeah. to figure out the timing. It's now more difficult for her to get from Phuket to Chiang Mai. Oh my God. Because the original plan was she does her 14 days, yeah. flies to Chiang Mai. It's pretty safe there. Um, her brother was there a few months ago. She spends a lot of time with her dad either Chiang Mai back to Hong Kong or fly back to Phuket and fly back mm. to Hong Kong. Yeah. And now they're, they're seeing when can flights resume. Can she go resume. on land? She can go on land. It is a 19-hour uh, car ride. Wow. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, so, and I was like, uh, get get a group because like, I don't, you know, as a one individual woman in Bangkok, do you yeah. Like, yeah. feel safe being in a car with someone for like yeah, 19 not, hours? Yeah, not right. And also like, it's... Uh, at certain parts of Thailand, it's rainy season right now, so it's really dangerous to drive as well. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. they resume the flights soon. And actually, what they're planning to do is, they're planning to resume at least some flights or some bus routes for just people in sandbox to go to other places. Because mm. you know, so you don't. Because these are the people who they know are all vaccinated, all safe. And actually, that's that's the other issue with what Hong Kong has done for the 21 days. It's like okay. You're putting Thailand on a list because of Bangkok. Why can't you let people in Phuket fly back for seven days? Because everyone in Phuket know. right now, yeah, yeah. they're tracked, they're tested all the time. It is literally the safest environment in possibly Asia. Like, yeah. it's everyone there is being tested all the time and they're being uh, traced. Yeah. So it's not even like, hey, scan, leave home safe to show you've been there. No, it's literally GPS tracking your movements. Wow. So the fact that they like people who are going to Koh Samoy, people who are going to Thailand can't come back, or yeah, people foreign travelers going into Phuket can't then come in. It's, I also it's read weird. that they're not letting other Thai people who are not from Phuket go into Phuket from yes. the rest of Thailand, yes. which is kind of fucked up to be honest. Uh, mm. unvaccinated, unvaccinated, but yes, uh, yeah, yeah, it's still it kind of fucked up, yeah, it is because they're allowing foreign tourists from all over the world and people from there, let's yeah. say from Bangkok, who want to just vacation in Phuket, or like, if no. you're from Phuket. I just or happen, you're from Phuket. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, no, I'm it's not crazy. vaccinated, so I can't go home. That's yeah. crazy, man. I mean, like, no one would have thought, like, be, even if you're in Phuket, or let's say you're at a resort, let's just say that area, right, where you're supposed to enjoy it and want more of it. Yeah, at some point, you're kind of like, I hate this. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's like the equivalent of, like, all right, tourists fly in here and go to Psych Home, but locals who are unvaccinated can't go to Psych Home. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, right, it's right, kind of like, yeah. oh, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's very weird. Um, I, I am, I will say we are picking up, though, so... Uh, you know when they talk about like will the vaccine rate plateau? Yeah, because it's clearly plateaued in the U.S. Because mm. it's just all the, I mean, either anti-vax or vaccine hesitant. Yeah, and I didn't realize how badly the U.S. has plateaued because it'll be about one to two weeks before Hong Kong overtakes U.S. in vaccination rate. Uh, and we kept talking about how slow. Things yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I know with the Delta variant, people pick back up in Hong Kong. Uh, I don't know why this wasn't a bigger news story. We're at like 52, 53%. Like we fa we passed 50%. Yeah, wow. we did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Half, Half of us are yeah. and, and you know when people were all like, oh, you know, a lot of the people who would be protesters or anti-government, they're the ones not getting vaxxed. They're actually all getting vaxxed now. Yeah. The yeah. problem in Hong Kong is the people 60 and up who were like, remember in the first few weeks, like, oh, 
eight yeah. people died. Yeah. Sign of that because they had conditions. They're like, now nah, we're not going to do it. Yeah, we're yeah, fine. Yeah. I'm like, no, the old people, sh- you guys should have been the first ones. Yeah. Every other country is like, 60 and older get the vaccine first. And we're like, yeah, that should be you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, no, and I and it's weird. I, I think something the SMP said, like 65 and above, it's 20% vaccinated in Hong See, Kong. See, this is why SMP needs to write better stuff. Like, instead of talking about how Nicole Kidman's flight and everything's good, <laughs> they should be like, hey, the vaccine is so awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. Guess who got this? You know, but, you could do that. I mean, is she vaccinated? I she, yes, she's vaccinated. Oh, she is. Yeah. Okay. She right. said she got vaccinated in April. Yeah. But that's. That's the other issue with the the fourteen to twenty one day thing. It means that there's no advantage to being vaccinated. Hmm. Oh yeah, that, that yeah, was exactly, my whole yeah. point. Yeah, the whole point. See, yeah, that's an, I argue with you guys a lot about this. Like yeah. it's yeah, it's so exactly this is, is like there is no incentive whatsoever. So well, I, I mean, the incentive is like not dying if you get COVID. Yeah, well, the, yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but we don't have COVID in Hong Kong. Yeah, that's yeah, the whole, yeah, exactly. That's the whole yeah. point. We don't have it. So this is actually an issue <laughs> that a lot of people like. I know a few people who are still not and like not anti vaxxed but like still fearful about vaccine it. Vaccine hesitant. Yeah, vaccine yeah. hesitant, yeah. right? So this is the issue. Like the traveling was one of the things that was going to push them and go like, ah, you know. Yeah, that's what Ben Cowling said said on the podcast as well exactly yeah he was talking about uh, that's yeah. the whole idea right now the lucky draw was really smart as in getting a lot of people being like ah oh, for that i'll do it right uh, i don't think it it like helped that <laughs> oh no, it did oh it did, oh, it did. oh yeah, dude, yeah yeah the the day if you look at the uh the, the graph spike, yeah. of vaccines per day yeah the spike was on the day they announced the day <laughs> lottery oh my dude, god how come yeah. people love because it's not it's not just winning shit it yeah. also feels like gambling yeah <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and finally we have yeah. that and there's a whole bunch like this, the funny thing though is like i have still yet to meet anybody who was actually one <laughs> Anything. anything yeah. yeah do you know because there's a whole bunch no. of them so, some of them are running now yeah the chamber of commerce has this one every yeah, week yeah yeah there right? is one like and, and they put the the ids and stuff on yeah, the they website give you, they give you a reference number so every yeah. time i search like my, my name my number's not there i'm like are these uh, are these real yeah like, yeah i saw the one of like um whichever development company was giving out lit- literal tales of gold bars i was like that would be cool yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, like, yeah. i got a block of gold i exactly. might not even sell it just hold on yeah yeah, yeah whatever yeah, yeah exactly uh, so yeah. that so that was the other issue is that there's, there hasn't, and now that with the traveling thing, they're all like, yeah, this, I'm never going to trust them ever again. No. <laughs> so these guys I, not even- you know, I would have, yeah, the traveling thing is awful. I would have done a, uh, when we got the $5,000 consumption voucher scheme, yeah. should have been like, and if you're vaccinated, you get a thousand more. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. A little perk over there, right? Uh, or- if you're listening and you know someone who won, if you won or you know someone who did win anything from the yeah. raffles, let us know. We'll post it on Instagram because I don't believe it's real. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait. So Cassie pointed this out and we used this because she was looking through a list of the prizes. Yeah. And we used this on the show yesterday. One of the prizes um, from the, I think it's the Hong Kong Chamber of Commerce one, uh, a bunch of the hotel chains got together. You got hotel perks, stay at the Marriott, stay at the uh, uh, Mandarin Oriental. One of the prizes was a three-night stay at the Dorset Hotel Wuhan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, who, who, is, who is like, oh, uh, yeah, that one. That Dude, one they're, is- go- they're going back into lockdown, by the way. My buddy Fahad, who runs the shows there, yeah. uh, they're having a few cases from Changsha, yeah. and they're basically locking down Wuhan again, testing everyone, telling oh. them to stay indoors. Yeah. It's also crazy because no one is, like China is also censoring all of that. So we're not hearing, about, the only reason I know about it is because the guy lives there. Uh, I tried to look it up. There is no news yeah, about yeah. China going back into lockdown or well, something at what, least. If anybody does win that door set Wuhan thing, send it to us. We'll send it to your friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I, I uh, My dad, he recently, because my dad works in um, Panyu, which is in between Shenzhen mm. and Guangzhou. So he recently had to go back up. Uh, he quarantined. And look, I wish, Ch- like, quarantine wouldn't be as bad if the quarantine didn't suck in Hong Kong. Mm. Like I, we had, we had friends who were like going to Australia and they're like, Oh, I have to quarantine. And they're in like five star hotels that were yeah. serving steaks and yeah. stuff. And the government pays for most of it. So you like, you don't yeah. get like ripped off Freaking here. Andy. Here it's yeah. like here. It, a lot of the places are gross and they're super expensive. Like yeah. also because of this quarantine news, all the quarantine hotels also jacked up their prices. Yeah. Like the, um, there are some hotels that are like 230 square foot room charging two thousand dollars a night Ooh, so damn. for your 21 days that's Jeez, you know that's like 40 something yeah, yeah yeah and um so my dad he had to do 14 day quarantine when he got into guangzhou and what they did was like they got a bunch of like you know they're building all these apartments to eventually sell out mm. and they're like eh, we got all these like service apartments that nobody lives in and they turn them into quarantine, uh, quarantine rooms, hotels yeah. my dad's trip is like they're super nice yeah they're way cheaper in hong kong like like a few hundred bucks yeah. a day 
and I had these like weird robots coming to you to serve you food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And I was like, my dad was showing me, he's like, see, quarantine's not that bad. I'm like, you're basically quarantining in a super nice apartment. Yeah, like, exactly. An apartment yeah. nicer than mine. You're fine. Yeah, when you come um, back here, then we'll talk again. Yeah. Yeah, All yeah. right, uh, to wrap this up, uh, when do you think Cassie is coming back? Uh, she will, huh. She will be back by the end of September. I think the key thing was uh, her birthday is on September 20th. So if you're listening on this on the September 20th, happy birthday, Cassie. Uh, <laughs> and and the, her whole thing was like she was going to get back beginning of September. So she's out by the time it's her yeah, birthday. Yeah, yeah. Now with it being 21 days, she's like, I just don't want to have my birthday in quarantine. I'd rather stay in Thailand a little longer and I can have my birthday with my dad. Yeah, yeah. fair so enough. So she'll probably be back after her birthday. Um, I feel like I'm doxing my own wife on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like giving everybody her whereabouts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, uh, everything then, our guests say do not reflect the opinions yeah. of the host of the yeah, show. And then, and then she'll hopefully be out of quarantine by middle of October. Damn. Can yeah. we do a guest of jelly bean thing like when Cassie's <laughs> <laughs> No, everybody buys a calendar date. If it's that yeah. date, you win all the pool. Actually, money. here's something I will actually commit to. Uh, we'll take a video of her leaving the uh, quarantine hotel whenever it is and I'll put it up on Patreon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, was, I promise I'll do that. I was, uh, I was really hoping like if we get her, there's a few hotels we're looking at now. Some we've like just booked just in case, but... There was one where uh, there's a park in Central where the rooms overlook, and I'm just gonna like every day walk my dog by there. It's like, hi, <laughs> you'll be out very soon. I love yeah. you. Yeah. She can throw stuff to you, right? I guess that's illegal. Yeah, I don't. I, don't I imagine you can't open throw. the window, right? I Cigarette think. butts. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> some, some quarantine hotels allow you to open the windows, uh-huh. uh, and everyone says it makes a big difference. It's like, of course. Sure. Having Psychologically, a yeah. Tiny room, but like fresh air. Yeah, yeah of uh, course. Big difference. Mate. Or just like here, like. Um, one of my coworkers was uh, quarantining in Causeway Bay, and his view was just of uh, the Wan Chai Market. Yeah, yeah. it's like just opening it and just and like listening people. to people yeah, talking yeah, 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 in the market, yeah, yeah, yeah. smelling the food or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm gonna go back and check out Spotify's uh, most popular audio clips. It's probably gonna be like restaurant sounds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for coming on, man. Oh, no, Always no lovely to have you. No worries. Uh, last thing, if you guys uh, haven't checked out the backstage shows for a while, please uh, come to a show, support us. We've been doing great things. Uh, these two guys have been uh, headlined. I by the time you listen to this, I've also headlined. We have many headliners coming. Uh, Baiju debates. Garen does Hong Kong as fuck shows as well. So check that out. Check when is out your next Hong show? Kong, uh, the next show isn't shit. It's in three weeks.